All right, wanted to shoot a quick video to show you how we process our morels. It's morel season. If you're lucky enough to find a bunch more than you can eat in one setting and you want to store some, uh, this is how we do it. I know there's all kinds of different ways. I know some people um, slice them, roll them in flour and freeze them. Others roll them in egg batter and freeze them. Um, I know some folks actually just put them in a bag full of water and freeze them. I think that is the absolute worst possible way. Um, that you can preserve morels if you have any extra. So if you put the work in, um, you wanna make sure that they last as long as you possibly can. So this is how we do it. Uh, I'll try to make it short and sweet. So here we go. <clears throat> um, we have our morels, right? We found them. Um, I've soaked them overnight. Uh, when you're soaking them, for me, I like to make sure that it's in well water. Um, so if you live in the city, even something with uh, the additives of fluoride or whatever they have in city water, um, if you want to do it this way, I would recommend buying bottled water because what I always do is with the water that sets overnight, I transfer it to another pan um, and then I take that water and I put it back in the areas where I found them. Um, I don't have any hard evidence uh, that the spores transfer and cause new mushrooms to come up, but that's what I do. That's my preference. So now um, all I'm going to do is take the morels that we found. I'm going to transfer them to another bowl here. <clears throat> So this is our second batch for the year. So we've done all right, we've got about 20 here. So there's my water, I don't know if you can see it. It's got a lot of color to it. Some of the tannic acids come out, um, but also full of spores. So we're gonna save that, walk it down to our little patch here in a little bit, and hopefully we'll be able to pick a few mushrooms off that for next year. So here's how we do it. Um, just for time's sake, I'm not gonna go through all of these. I'm gonna show you on a real good size uh, mushroom here. I'll set a couple out. Um, I like to freeze mine. I'm going to show you how we freeze them. In order to do so, I'm going to go through all of these and I slice them in half. And I slice them in half long ways. So once you do that, you got a nice clean, um, clean cut there. And essentially, you've gone from one mushroom down to four. So once you slice those, it should look something similar to that. I'm going to go ahead and slice the rest of these and I'll come back in just a second and show you how we go on to the next step. All right, so we have all of our morels sliced in half. Uh, obviously, when you do that, it um, takes up a little bit more space on the cutting board. But I'm weird about I want to make sure that my morels are washed and they're clean, any dirt. Um, a lot of times, there's little little bugs on the inside um, of the morel. So it's a lot of times when you slice them open, you'll find little bugs in here. So I always like to make sure these have soaked overnight. Uh, I just finished cutting them in half. I'm going to put them back into a separate bowl here. And we're going to give them one more quick wash before we transfer them to the next step. So I wanted to show this too. Um, I'll do two or three washings after I've cut these. So I've cut them in half. I've put them back in the water and you can see I fill the water just about a third of the way up in the bowl. And I'll actually take my hand and just lightly toss them. Um, again, after setting all night, if there were any things on them, any dirt, uh, all that stuff tends to uh, become loose and wash off, but you can't get all of it off just by running water over it. So I'll put my hand in there and just kind of mix it around real gentle. You're not squeezing them, you squeeze them, you're gonna ruin them. Just kind of lightly tossing. Um, I'll do this two or three times and you can see each time, there's a lot of particles there coming at the top. Um, each time you do that, it'll wash them a little bit cleaner. So I do that three times and then I'm finished and I'll move on to the next step. All right, so we've soaked our morels overnight. We transferred the water. Um, I've cut them in half and I've gone to, through the two or three separate washings um, and we're good to go. So now we move on to the next step. So what I do here, again, this is me personally, I like to freeze mine uh, and I'll show you why. So I take a cookie sheet um, and with that cookie sheet, I use parchment paper. So you can use parchment paper, you can use aluminum foil. I don't think it really matters. What that does is it creates a non-stick surface um, when you freeze these between the mushroom um, and whatever, whatever type of medium that you're using here. Uh, so once they're frozen, you can just take it out and shake it and they're loose and ready to go. So I've drained these two or three times. Morels have a lot of different uh, nooks and crannies in them. So no matter which way you turn or shake it, there's always going to be some water left over. So all I do is I pour these out onto the sheet. And then what I'll do now is I will just work on, there's no rhyme or reason here. I'm just laying them flat on their cut edge. So cut edge, lay it flat. Um, that creates essentially a... a good non-sticking surface to the morel and then oh, pardon the beep there we're baking cakes today's Easter so I'm gonna get all these turned over lay them flat and so it's also important that if you can try to create space between them 
because if they freeze and they're touching, when you go to break, uh, morels aren't the sturdiest of things. You may snap them in half. So looks pretty good. They're all flat. They're all separated. Next step, we transfer this to the freezer um, and they'll freeze, leave them in there for an hour or two or whatever, three days until you can get back around to doing the next step. So we're ready to go. We'll move on to the next step. All right, last step. So this is the first batch that we found the other day. They've been in the freezer for a couple days until I had time to shoot this video. So exact same process was used. They've cut in half. We laid them on the parchment paper. They're frozen, solid. Um, so here's the cool thing. You just kind of pick the paper up, roll it over, and they come right off. There's some water, no big deal. So here's what I do. Remember the flat edge? I will cram them into a whatever brand freezable bag that you have. Um, or not freezable bag, but a vacuum seal bag. And then I'll lay them in here on their flat edge. So it doesn't have to be pretty, but I'm big on presentation. I give a lot of these away. Um, have a lot of friends that can't hunt morels, but love them. And so if we have extra, I try to make sure that I include them. So as you can see, as I'm laying them in here, I'm making sure that they're not stuck together and I'm pushing them in on their flat edge. So as you get them in there, I know that this might be in the way here. You can see a little better. I just kind of slide them to the back. And so I'm gonna keep cramming these in here. And when I get finished, I'll come back and I'll show you my last step and what the finished product looks like. All right, last step, still frozen. Got our bag packed. Um, we have a food saver, doesn't matter what kind, but now they're in the bag, they're ready to go. So we just hook it up to the food saver here. Get it set, press on. So if these were not frozen, um, if they were fresh out of the water, obviously you couldn't do this because the vacuum seal would collapse them and crush them. Finished product. So now I can straighten out a little bit. Whoops. Finished product. Um, so it's nice. It's neat. I just think it looks good, especially if you're going to be giving it as a gift or giving it to somebody. And for storage purposes, you can slide it in your freezer um, and they tend to store a little better. The other option is I've seen guys do it where they freeze them and they just pop them into a Ziploc bag. You can certainly do that too. Uh, but for us, I try to keep our freezer organized. You can get a little bit more in there. So either way, you can take the frozen ones, put them directly into a Ziploc bag, or you can vacuum seal it just like this. So I hope that helps. Good luck. Happy hunting. Catch you next time.